Hey guys, today we are testing the Radeon VE which was later rebranded as the Radeon 7000. It launched around the same time as the original Radeon which we have here. This card was later rebranded as the Radeon 7200. The chip on this card is the R100 and on our Radeon 7000 it is the RV100, V very likely for value. There are different variants in terms of clock speed, but in general the Radeon 7000 is slower than the 7200. We only have a single pixel pipeline, but otherwise it's quite nice. We have a universal AGP interface, so this will work on a slot 1 machine as well as a modern Athlon 64. We have VGA, DVI and also S-Video TV outputs. And this is also the first Radeon card that can drive uh, dual monitors, a feature I haven't tried. I only use the DVI output, but yeah, if that's something you want to test out under Windows 98, give this card a go. The card I have has the core and the memory running at 149 megahertz with 32 gigabytes of VRAM connected with a 64-bit memory interface. Our test system consists of a Gigabyte Socket 754 AMD mainboard. We have an Athlon 64 3000 Plus running at 2 GHz with 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache. 256 MB of DDR memory running at 200 MHz. A 4 TB Western Digital 3.5 inch SATA mechanical hard drive together with a SATA to ID adapter and I went in the BIOS and configured the CHS parameters manually for a capacity of 8.423 gigabytes. And for sound we have a Sound Blaster Live, this is the CT4830. I'm also testing a different open source video editor and all the footage is integer scaled best to watch it on a large TV at 4K. In terms of software, we have Windows 98 SE, the VIA 4.55 chipset drivers, ATI's 6.2 graphics card drivers. For the sound card, we're using the Audi G2 ZS drivers. They work really well with the Sound Blaster Live. And finally, DirectX 7. Let's start our testing. In 3D Mark 99 Max, we're getting 8,334 3D Marks. And in 3D Mark 2000, 3,345. I also quickly tested the Radeon 7200 that I showed earlier. This is the SDR version and it scores 5,136 in 3D Mark 2000. So we have a bit of a comparison. Let's check out resolution scaling. This is incoming with 32-bit colors. And even at 1024 by 768, we're getting over 60 FPS. The Radeon cards are known for having excellent 32-bit color performance and we can see it here dropping down the color depth to 16 bits. We're not getting too much of a performance boost so the bottom line is if you're using a Radeon card under Windows 98 just stick with 32-bit colors. You're not going to get a huge performance boost with lower colors. Now, 32-bit colors and 16-bit colors, what does that mean? Here we have two games, Quake 3 and Incoming, and we are comparing how these games look. In the 16-bit color mode, we can see, yeah, sort of a grain, uh, more individual pixels are observable, and it just doesn't look as smooth and as nice as with 32-bit colors. So if your game supports 32-bit color and you've got a Radeon, definitely enable it. Here we have a Dracon. This is a more demanding game and we can see as we crank up the resolution performance takes a dive quite quickly. Even at a low resolution of only 800 by 600 we are dipping below the 60 FPS. So this is a game you might want to play on a more powerful Radeon card. Let's have a look at OpenGL performance. This is Quake 2 and again performance drops as we increase the resolution but even at 1024 by 768 over 60 FPS, so Quake 2 is nicely playable on the Radeon 7000. When you look at the driver, there is an option to enable anisotropic filtering. So I ran some tests in Quake 3 with that feature enabled and disabled. The driver only lets you enable 16x anisotropic filtering or have it disabled. And we can see around 12% of a performance loss by enabling this feature. What does 16AF look like? Here we have 
a gain blood 2 we're comparing at 800 by 600 with af enabled and disabled and you can see a significant nicer image with anisotropic filtering enabled so i do recommend that you enable this feature even when losing a little bit of performance However, on these early Radeon cards, the implementation of anisotropic filtering is not perfect. It is angle dependent. And we can see this here in Return to Castle Wolfenstein. When we lean to the sides, we can see that the filtering yeah, is highly angle dependent and doesn't filter in such situations. But in most games, you will still get a much better image. The driver also has a setting for anti-aliasing. We've got two images here. I'm going to toggle back and forth. Yes, with 4X AA, it does look nicer, less jaggies, but huge performance impact. Instead of getting silky smooth locked 30 FPS, it's dropping to around 20 FPS. This is in Tomb Raider 2, running at 800 by 600. The ATI Radeon cards also have some issues with legacy compatibility. For example, 8-bit palleted textures. They're not supported. We can see the message here in Final Fantasy VII. And the card also has issues with fog. Here we are in Thief 2. This is a level. There is fog displayed throughout the entire level, but it doesn't show up on the Radeon. And now let's have a look at some gameplay. GL Quake running at 800 by 600 with 32-bit colors. And yeah, silky smooth. We're hitting the uh, engine cap of around 70 FPS. So this game runs perfectly fine on this machine. Next up is Blood 2. This is rendered at 16-bit colors. It's a limitation of the engine. And for the most part, it runs fairly smooth. But we are getting dips below 60 FPS. Uh, this game also runs at 800 by 600. Very nice is the sound. Uh, we have EAX support, so make sure you go into the options and enable that. This game sounds really nice. This is Tomb Raider 2, 800 by 600 with 32-bit colors. We're getting 30 FPS locked, which is the uh, capacity limit of the engine. And yeah, perfect, runs perfect. So definitely a game I would recommend on this machine. Next up, here we have Thief Two. The game also seems playable at 800 by 600, but without the fog, maybe not the best game to play on this graphics card. Total Annihilation Kingdoms is next, 800 by 600. This game seems to be running perfectly fine. It's an RTS game. Don't have too much experience with it, but seems to be running fine. Return to Castle Wolfenstein. We have to test this game. This is with all the options, all the eye candy enabled, including the uh, dynamic uh, lights. And this game struggles. Probably not a game I would play on this video card. And we have another game, Shogo, running at 800 by 600. Also seems to run okay. This game is from the same developers and uses the same engine as Blood 2. So we have 16-bit colors. You can see the grain and yeah. Again, sometimes we get an FPS drop, but this game, I would still call it playable on this graphics card. So guys, what's the verdict? The Radeon 7000, decent performance for starters, especially in the older games. You can crank up the resolution. 32-bit performance is excellent. Drivers are also pretty good. The ATL Radeon drivers, you can just go with the latest drivers, unlike with the Nvidia cards where you need to use older drivers for maximum performance. Bit unfortunate with the 8-bit palletized textures and the uh, Fox support. So some games are not recommended to play on the Radeon. And when you're testing newer games like Return to Castle Wolfenstein, you will uh, not get ideal performance. And in Blood 2 and Shogo, we get some FPS dips. So it does run out of steam fairly quickly. But if you get this card for a good price, definitely add it to your collection. Um, it is compatible with old motherboards, slot one, but also uh, newer boards with AGP uh, 8X interface. So that is nice. It's a nice hybrid card. And yeah, I really enjoyed creating this video. Do let me know what do you think of this card, the Radeon 7000 and previously called the Radeon VE. And if you have a 4K TV with a, with a built-in uh, smart uh, TV YouTube app, let me know if you see a difference uh, in this video with the integer scaling. I'm very interested to hear what you think. And 
That's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think. Comments, leave them down below. What is your favorite video card for Windows 98? Uh, do you use a Radeon? What are your thoughts about that? And that's it. Thank you for watching. And I shall see you soon with another one.